Welcome to another video from Robotic Mower Services. In this video here, I'm going to talk to you about the charging station tower for the 115H because this is completely different than uh, the charging station tower for any of the other models out there. And I guess we'll start out with why this is so different. Well, as you can see, we don't have the base plate here that goes underneath this because there's nothing to talk about with that plate. It's not like with the other charging stations where you have an antenna wire in that plate that broadcasts your far signal so that when the mower is out here well out in front of that plate, it'll pick up that signal from that antenna in the charging station plate and help draw it in and help it get lined up and everything. 115H doesn't have that in its charging station tower. <clears throat> this is the tower assembly here. It's also one there, but this is one right here. And this little antenna wire in here, that's your basically your near signal there. So when the mower follows the guide wire in and gets close enough, then it'll spin around and this this wire right here, this antenna right here, that's that's all the more signal it's getting, you know, just right in front of here to help it uh, get in there the charging contacts properly. Between that and the guide wire running straight through the middle, that's how it lines itself up. That's how it does it. So that's why the guide wire is so important in the 115H system. When you set up your remote start locations, that's when the mower is leaving the charging station to go out in the working area. You have your spots on your guide wire where you can tell the mower to start, you know, like 10 feet out on the guide wire, 50 feet out on the guide wire, wherever. But, you know, with most mowers, um, other than the 115H, you can tell the mower to follow the guide wire out. You can tell it to follow left boundary wire or right boundary wire out. You can also use the boundary wires to find the way back to the charging station along with the guide wire on all the other models. The 115H does not do that. It will only follow the guide wire to get back to the charging station. So the guide wire is very crucial to this entire system for the 115H. And we'll get into more about that in a little bit. But back to the, the charging station tower, as I said, you have this antenna wire in here. <clears throat> There's a circuit board in here, but it's not like the other models where you can replace it. The only thing you can do with this tower is replace the entire thing. So the positive about that is it makes it pretty easy to diagnose. You don't have to worry if it's a wiring harness inside if it's bad or the circuit board is bad because it doesn't matter. You're replacing this whole thing. And uh, I'll show you why. I'll open this one up here because this one's actually broken. But this is your circuit board. It's It's inside this this um, silicone encased uh, compartment here you know it's all just it's all sealed up you can't get anything out of there you can't put anything in you know the wires go in there they're all sealed up completely the only thing you could do is if you um, if yours gets somehow just physically broken something falls on or whatever you might be able to find another one used somewhere and you know piece your own together if you needed just a part of the housing or something like that or um, you did have a problem with your, your wire ends up here, of course you can replace them, but there's there's nothing you can get from Husqvarna separate um, for this charging station tower. It's just this assembly here or nothing. Now on the back of it, you have your spot for your, your uh, left boundary wire, right boundary wire, guide wire, and you have where your low voltage cable plugs in. If you don't know, the low voltage cable used for the 115H charging station is also the same one used on the 300 series mowers, all those, the 310, 315, 315X, and it's also the same one used for a 430X and a 430XH. Um, so that's that's pretty handy there because for some reason a lot of people haven't picked up on that, that, you know, that one cable will fit so many different models. Um, so, yeah, the charging station tower, that's really the, the crucial stuff about the tower itself there. Now, when we get into the wiring, as you can see, I got a boundary wire system laid out here. It's a small version of it. We've got a left boundary wire, right boundary wire, and a guide wire. And it's all being held down by the good old SpongeBob SquarePants duct tape that I've had around here forever. So like I said, the guide wire is crucial to this entire system. When you have everything hooked up and everything's working good, you're going to have that solid green light. That's what we look for on all of our automotors, right? Solid green light should be good to go. Shouldn't be any issues. If you have a problem with your boundary wire, 
as you know on all the other models, you will get the flashing blue light. Let me unplug one of the wires here. And there we go, we got the flashing blue light coming in. So that's going to be a sign that we have a problem with our, our boundary wire or we're just not getting enough power from our charging, uh, from our transformer coming into our charging station. But more than likely it's going to be something to do with the boundary wire, either a cut in the boundary wire or high resistance somewhere in the boundary wire. So plug that back in, get back to our green light. Now on the 115H, because I keep saying the guide wire is so crucial to everything with the, with the 115H, they actually have uh, an LED specifically for the guide wire. This is the only model right now that they have out there currently that does this. If there's a problem with your guide wire, it's gonna flash yellow. So if something happens here to the circuit board inside of this tower, where it's not putting enough power through this wire, or you know it's just not functioning, then uh, it's gonna flash yellow. If this guide wire is cut, if it's unplugged, if there's high resistance in it, if it's not connected out the boundary wire for some reason, if there's any kind of problem with this guide wire, you're going to get the yellow flashing light. So that is very critical. Like I said, without the guide wire, the mower's not going to be able to find its way into the charging station properly. It's not going to follow its way out to get the places where it needs to go. But here's where people get confused on this. Because you have a flashing yellow light, that means there's something wrong with your guide wire. But let me unplug the boundary wire again. So now, you have a flashing blue light. And the reason why it goes from flashing yellow light to flashing blue light, even though we have a cut in our, our guide wire and a cut in our boundary wire, is because obviously your boundary wire system is the most important. Without the boundary wire system, the mower won't run at all. You could, if you get your boundary wire system fixed and you have the flashing yellow light, you could you know, physically pick your mower up, put it out there in the yard and tell it to start. And as long as the boundary wire system is good and operable, the mower will operate. It might not find its way back to the charging station, like I said, it might not find its way out to where it needs to go, but you can still manually start that mower in there and it'll still run. So that's why the blue light for the boundary wire takes priority over the yellow light for the guide wire. What the, uh, the confusion is with that is also if, <clears throat> if you have a break in your boundary wire, you know, the thing to do is you would swap out your guide wire for one of your boundary wires, try to get a green light. Well, you don't know if your, if your, if your guide wire is good or not until you get your boundary wire fixed, and now you'll know if your guide wire is good. I mean, other than if you do a resistance check, um, to know for sure whether you got an issue with the guide wire or not. There's no way of telling by looking at the lights. So you fix your boundary wire and you'll get back to the flashing yellow light. So then you know, okay, my boundary wire is good, flashing yellow, I've got a problem with my guide wire yet, let me get that fixed. And here we are, back to green flag racing again. But now, just like with all the other charging stations, on the back, where you have your your uh, male spade connectors, your terminals here for your left boundary wire, your right boundary wire, and your guide wire. Guide wire. Uh, like we showed you in that one video where you have the low voltage cable hooked up to your charging station, the transformer's plugged in, you got the power coming in. You can go through here and you can test the voltage coming out of your, your charging station. So that's gonna tell you if the board inside here failed or not. Uh, you can also do that for your guide wire. Remember, you want to have about 4.5 volts coming out for your guide wire. The others, you should have 28 volts or a little bit more. Well, right around there. Every now and then, they do drop a little bit. But, um, you know, you want to you look for as close to 28 as you can get or higher. Um, <clears throat> so you can test that stuff. That's a way to tell if your circuit board has an issue. You know, if you know you got good power coming from your, your transformer through your low-voltage cable, you plug your low-voltage cable into here and you don't have that same power coming out of here, then you've got an issue with this thing. And again, just replace the whole thing. Uh, so yeah, that makes it pretty easy to diagnose, like I was saying. Um, the other thing with this is, this is, uh, this is one of these weird ones where from time to time, we'll see an issue where the LED doesn't light up, but everything's still working fine. <laughs> it's, 
It's very bizarre. The mower will be out there mowing, come in, it'll dock, but the LED's not lit up. That was on, mostly on the older ones, the original ones, like 2019, 2020, you know, we were seeing the older ones that had the, uh, the brown wire in there for the antenna wire. We were seeing that on them. So if you have one of them and the LED is not lit up, you just have to notice it one day, hey, that LED is not lit up, but your mower's still working, wait till something else goes wrong with it. You know, that's just my honest opinion there. There's, there's no sense in spending the money to replace this assembly if it's still working. You know, the LED isn't all that crucial until there's a problem. And once you have a problem, then you know, well, okay, the LED wasn't working, so chances are something else went bad in this thing. Time to replace the whole thing, get a new one, and, and go from there. But I uh, just wanted to point that out because, like I said, we ran into it quite a few times. Now, I will also point out, too, I said about the, uh, the white wire in here. This is on the, the newer style ones. Hold that up there so you can see a little bit better. That, that antenna wire, it's white. The older ones had a brown wire in there. They redesigned these uh, a little bit to, to make them a little bit sturdier because the older ones, the mower would come in and it'd be off just a little bit and it would hit like right on this part here. And it, over time, you know, it, it's not like it was hitting it real hard, like, you know, high speed crash or anything, but over and over again, it would keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing. And eventually you would see this thing start to split apart, like this right here, because this one's broken inside. But um, what would happen is this would split apart, and the old ones didn't have have the tabs in the right places to be able to clip it back together. And you'd see some separation right here. The big thing with that is, as long as everything here is lining up where it should be, if that thing splits apart, again, but everything else is still working, my recommendation is put some kind of a wire tie around there to clamp that thing together that does not impede the mower from docking properly, keep using it. Again, you know, why spend the money on one of these if it's still usable and it's still working? Wait till it completely goes. Just my honest opinion there, you know, we love to sell you guys parts because that's how we make our money, but we don't want to sell you parts if you don't need them, and we don't want to sell you the wrong parts, and there's a good way to save a little bit of money, get a little bit more use out of these towers. Uh, but like I said, the big thing is you want to make sure that this is at the right height. You don't want this thing to be coming out. You can see when this moves out here, that drops down. So now all of a sudden the mower is not going to hit that properly and it's going to start pushing back on it more and more. So as long as everything's at the good, at a good height where it should be, where the mower can come in and park, you can put, um, zip ties around there or something to fasten that thing to keep it from pushing out when the mower comes in to park. Now, if you're having problems with your mower parking, you might want to check that, that this isn't starting to push out a little bit and that's hanging down. And that's why when it does get lined up this way, front to back, that it's not a height issue where this is, this is hitting on the mower lower than it should. So just a lot of different stuff there to look for with these 115 H's because uh, a lot of people get confused because it is completely different than what you would see with your charging stations for your 300, 400, and 500 series mowers. You know, and I know when most people go to search for uh, some kind of help with diagnosing an issue with a charging station, that's what comes up right away. And you're looking at it like, well, this is what my charging station tower looks like, and these guys have one that doesn't look anything like this. Yeah, um, you know, aside from the fact that you can't replace parts in this, it still functions the same way, and the fact that your transformer, your low-voltage cable are going to put the power through here, and it's got to come out for your boundary wires and your guide wires. It's still the same feature with the uh, LED as far as green light. Good to go. Uh, flashing blue. There's a problem with your boundary wire. They do add the one, like I said, for the, the flashing yellow for the guide wire, so that helps you out a little bit. But um, some people just get really confused on that. They're like, well, this one's completely different, so mine doesn't work that way. Or, you know, I'm trying to find this because it says I need to check this next, but where do I find that on this? Now you know. Now you have a better idea of what's what with this and a little bit more certainty um, as to what you need to do to diagnose this and repair this thing. Yes. Yeah, you see this one here, it's got the old, this one has the brown wire in it. I'll plug this here to show you. You can see that that has, that has brown wire in it. This is the old one. And this one has the white antenna wire in it. So you'll probably still see some of these out there from time to time. 
um, people that that order replacement charging station towers. You know, if the dealers had it sitting around for a while because they didn't sell many of them, you'd probably still get one with the brown wire. But if you get one with the white wire, then you know, hey, I've got the the newest and the latest and greatest. Um, I would show you here how they how they changed some some of this stuff to make it clip together a little bit better, but. My good one that I got came in broken, uh, as this was a replacement one I ordered from Husqvarna, and uh, FedEx did a number on it when they delivered it, but yeah. So, again, hopefully that clarifies some stuff for you guys with the 115Hs, you know, it's not, not as intimidating as you would think. Um, oh yeah, one more thing to point out on these, when there is a problem with the charging station itself, you will get the solid red light on there, just like you can for the, uh, the other charging stations where there's a problem with the circuit board and you get the solid red light. So if you see a solid red LED on your 115H charging station tower, then you know there's an issue with this. And again, replace the whole thing. So as always, if you need a charging station tower or any other parts for your 115H or any other automowers out there, place to go is www.roboticmowerservices.com. If you can't find what you're looking for there on our website, you can contact us through the website, or you can send us an email, roboticmowerservices at gmail.com. That's going to do it for this video here. As always, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to our channel.